This is Medication Minute, and in this video, we're going to review succinylcholine. Succinylcholine chloride is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker, meaning it's a paralytic that's utilized for drug-facilitated intubation after the patient's been sedated. The dosage for succinylcholine is 2 mg per kilogram IV or IO. Since it's a depolarizing medication, after you administer this dose rapid IV, you may witness some fasciculations as the patient becomes fully uh, paralyzed. Once that occurs, their jaw will become very flaccid and it would facilitate an easier endotracheal intubation attempt. Now, it's extremely important to remember that you do not want to cause conscious paralysis, so the patient should be fully sedate prior to administering succinylcholine. You would want to give either ketamine or etomidate to assure that the patient's fully sedated prior to administering this medication. Some signs and symptoms that a patient might be regaining their consciousness after being sedated and being paralyzed might be tearing at the eyes and an increase in heart rate due to the anxiety that they would be feeling from their conscious paralysis. You're gonna to want to monitor them for full paralysis, then perform your intubation rather quickly Again, this being a depolarizing agent, it lasts about 10 to 15 minutes before they start getting muscle tone back and the ability to control their own respirations and their gag reflex will return. The patient should be monitored for capnography the entire time, as well as a pulse oximetry, heart rate, blood pressure, and EKG. So a couple of more important things, succinylcholine can cause malignant hyperthermia. So if a patient has a history of malignant hyperthermia, of course, you would want to avoid treating them with succinylcholine. Also, it is not a great medication for patients with crush syndrome or patients that are susceptible to hyperkalemia. This was Medication Minute on succinylcholine.